this is Dr. Danton and I'm going to do a quick review of how to go through a DVT ultrasound study of the lower extremity veins. So just to quickly review the anatomy, you have the IVC and off the IVC is the common iliac vein and then it uh, bifurcates and then of most pertinent to us is going to be the external iliac vein and this is the first vein that you'll be able to really evaluate with these ultrasound examinations. So we're going to look at the external iliac vein and then the femoral vein once it crosses the inguinal ligament and of particular importance is going to be the junction of the greater saphenous vein which is not a deep vein, it's a superficial vein, but this is an area where you can get a thrombus more commonly. So we're going to look at the femoral vein and we're going to look at that in high, medium, and then low. And then we're going to look at the popliteal vein for evidence of DVT. So the most important technique for determining if a DVT is present is compressibility of the veins. And so you're going to get an image like this. And something to pay particular attention to is, of course, the labeling of the image. So here it says right CFE, common femoral vein, or femoral vein, and the saphenous. And this is an arresting state. So uh, here's the saphenous vein, common femoral vein, and they're both measured. Now in the very next image, the technologist has compressed the veins. So he's taken the transducer and applied pressure in order to squeeze the veins. And a normal vein should squeeze until there's essentially no lumen. And we're paying particular attention to the common femoral vein because that is the deep vein. And here you can see with the, the two pluses close together, that is compressed. So uncompressed, compressed. So there's no thrombus. Then again, uh, femoral vein, high position, resting state, then high compressed. Now you'll say, well, what's this? Well, that's the adjacent artery. So here there were two vessels, and now there's just one. Just the artery remains, and the vein is compressed. So superficial femoral vein mid, compressed, and then low, and then compressed. So no, no venous thrombosis. And then the popliteal in rest, and then compressed. So it's normal. Now we're also going to see color images using Doppler to look at flow through the vein. And you want to make sure the velocity settings are fairly low for veins. So now we see the popliteal vein very well. So there's good flow. On, on these images, you're looking to see if there's any filling defects or if there's any narrowing of the vessel. And then here is a spectral waveform analysis. So we're generating these waveforms of blood flow through the veins. And the way to think of this is this is a frequency distribution of velocities of blood cells moving through the vein. So the brighter the white, the higher the number of blood cells moving at that particular velocity. So the x-axis represents time and the y-axis is velocity. This would be 3.9 centimeters per second, 7.8 centimeters per second. And so you see because there is grayness and whiteness here, there are some blood cells moving at very low velocities. And then there's a lot more blood cells moving at these higher velocities. And we'll usually pay attention to the peaks. Now there should be some variation in the normal waveforms of vessels. So here's an example of normal respiratory variation of flow through the vein. So during inspiration, flow decreases because of the increase in intra-abdominal pressure. During expiration, venous return and blood flow increase. And this is what accounts for that phasic respiratory variation. You're going to see the variation most commonly in the common femoral and the proximal femoral veins, less so in the popliteal vein and 
distal veins. Now you'll notice that the technologists will have the patient do a Valsalva and what this does is it assesses for reflux and what you might see is some very brief flow reversal until the valves close but this this flow reversal should be less than about 0.5 seconds and so if it's brief then it's normal but if this were to reverse and stay reversed then that would be indicative of reflux so again you're going to check all of the color images make sure there's no uh, filling defects you're going to look at the spectral waveforms to make sure that you can see good waveforms with good respiratory variation. So here's another patient showing flow through the greater saphenous vein at rest. And then with Valsalva, you'll notice that, that this frequency distribution reverses. So now flow has reversed. And this is what you'll see with venous insufficiency. So this is reflux, and that's an abnormal pattern. Here in another patient is what you might see in the case of a DVT. So here's the saphenous vein emptying into the femoral vein, and there's no flow. When the technologist attempted to measure flow in the left external iliac vein, they could not measure any flow. Same when they tried to measure flow in the left common femoral vein. And here in the left femoral vein, again, no flow. And in the left femoral vein high position, here is at rest. And then this is with compression. And you can see there's no change. And superficial femoral vein lower down, again, no compression. So there is thrombus in that vessel. Now sometimes the thrombus will have a, a heterogeneous appearance, but sometimes that will be difficult to appreciate. But regardless of whether or not you think you can see the clot, the fact that the vein is no longer compressible means that there is a thrombus.